Hello, this is Overlord Boat, and we're back with SAT score, and today we'll be continuing off from our last coal ship video, which was recommending the tier 9s and 10 uh, coal ships. We'll be looking at the tier 7 and below uh, recommended coal ships. Now, since there are no tier 8 coal ships, we'll be looking at the tier 7 and below, and let's get started. So, we'll be heading over the ships real quick, clicking on coal, and looking at the tier uh, 7 six uh four six three and five so let's get started so for the first coal ship we'll be looking at today is going to be we starting at the tier seven so i'll be looking at the flint the flint costs 168,000 coal it is a tier seven u.s cruiser with it's essentially an atlanta but with smoke instead of radar it is known as a damage farmer but with very limited range it suffers in very large maps and when up tiered due to tier 8 and 9 radar as well, which is not really good at all. Uh, it's somewhat hard to use effectively due to its limited range. Uh, it's okay in randoms, poor in rent, good in operation uh, Nari if you're trying to get some uh, free XP or commander XP from in there. Uh, but it's not recommended due to being too expensive and not being a very strong ship. Uh, the next tier 7 uh, cruiser we're looking at is the Lazo. It costs 83,000 coal, a uh, tier 7 Russian CL. It's very similar to the Chappie in Shores, uh, a long range kiting ship with fast reloading spotter plane gimmick. Uh, its spotter plane is 60 seconds uptime with a 10 second reload and can be continuously up, to, it can be done this continuously up to 10, 5 minutes. So, it's normal difficulty uh, in usage. It's okay in randoms, poor in ranked, and again, it's okay in the Nari scenar uh, scenario that you can do with your friends or with randoms if it's uh, up that week. It is recommended for learning how to shoot with spotter planes or a good kiting ship, so I would recommend it for uh, teaching you how to do that. Now, the Duke of York. The Duke of York costs 101,000 uh, coal. It is a tier 7 British battleship. It is similar to the King George V, but a longer reload, but with improved AP pen angles. Uh, 60 through 67.5 uh, angles where it can still pen. It does have a low skill floor and about an average skill ceiling. Overall, it's an average strength in randoms and average in ranked. It's also okay as a, it's okay as a tier seven premium battleship, but it's not really strongly recommended for its price. Uh, the final one for the tier sevens is going to be the Bliss of Wakia. I'm probably butchering that. I apologize. It costs fifty one thousand coal. Uh, it's a tier seven pan European DD. It's very similar to the Russian DD playstyle, uh, long range gun boating with uh, eight kilometer torps. You definitely want to le learn how to use the guns on these, uh, not fluffy. Uh, don't be, you don't really rely on the torpedoes. It does have an above average skill floor and ceiling, uh, but it does pe perform poorly in both randoms and ranked. So I would not really recommend this. Now for the tier six, uh, coal ships. Uh, we'll be looking at first the Agil. Now the Agil costs 49,500 coal. It is a tier 6 French DD. Now it does. it is a Russian DD play style since this ship is not French. It is the only French DD to have uh, smoke and it is a long range gunboat but with fast rep repositioning. It does not have a French DD saturation like, as you can know from the French DDs, usually over time, it's a lot harder to do damage on them because of that saturation. So this ship can get killed a lot easier than normal French DDs. It does have an above average skill floor and ceiling. It's okay in randoms and ranked, but I'd highly recommend this ship for a solid mid-tier gunboat DD. Now for the Gallant. The Gallant, it costs 48,000 coal, uh, tier 6 uh British DD. It, it does have American DD handling and consumables, but with British guns. And now it does have the standard DD roll, uh, above uh, above average uh, skill floor and uh, ceiling, 
it's okay for randoms and ranked and I'd recommend it for a decent mid-tier DD. Now for the final tier 6, we'll be looking at is the Anshin. It, it costs 40,000 coal. It is a tier 6 Pan-Asian DD. Uh, it's essentially a Russian DD with 8 kilometer torps. It does have a unique premium camo that gives plus 100% free XP earnings. Uh, it's... Uh, it can be used as a RUDD or a standard DD. It ha does have an average skill floor and ceiling. Uh, it's solid in ranked and randoms, but it's also recommended for an inexpensive free XP farming ship. Now I'm going to let SAT score do the tier 5s and below. Alright, so I'll be starting with the October Revolution. October Revolution costs 53,500 coal. It's a tier 5 Russian battleship, and she was one of the first Russian battleships before Wargaming decided on how the Russian tech tree line would work out. Uh, you can think of her as a tier 5 version of Ganguit or the Imperator Nikolai, uh, with just being an uh, overall improvement on many aspects of the Ganguit. Uh, otherwise, she is she plays similarly to other Russian battleships, having that same limited DCP and heal. Uh, she is fairly easy to play, uh, but you do have to be careful about her uh, broadside, uh, giving broadsides. She does have an average skill floor. Uh, skill flo She has average skill ceiling, sorry. Uh, she's a pretty good ship overall, and I would recommend her if you want just a nice, uh, cheap, and fun low-tier premium battleship to run around in. So for our next ship, we have to Kirov at 43,000 coal. She is a Russian, tier 5 Russian heavy cruiser. She was, av she was originally part of the tech tree line until she was replaced by two other uh, Russian cruisers. She is kind of similar uh, to the Furutaka in that she carries hev uh, heavy cruiser guns. She's also fairly uh, vulnerable to broadside citadels and she's kind of squishy if you don't play her correctly. Uh, because of that, I'd actually rate her somewhat harder to use than typical, and she's kind of hard to master because you need to be able to uh, get around that durability issue, and using her guns can sometimes be a challenge. Overall, she still does okay, and if you just want a cheap uh, heavy cruiser to run around in, then she's a fine, she's a fine pick. Uh, then we have the USS Hill, 38,000 coal. She's a... Uh, tier 5 US destroyer. She's pretty similar to the tech tree ship Nicholas, but instead of uh, having t having more torpedoes, she only has she has less torpedo tubes, but one more gun. She's very stealthy at around having very good concealment. She's ends up being very powerful against other destroyers. Although her lack of torpedoes makes it a trouble whenever you have to fight battleships. And due to this, she can be difficult to play correctly at times, but she is definitely re uh, very rewarding, especially if Fire RNG is on your side. She's, so she's actually a pretty solid low-tier gunboat. You can, many, uh, you can think of her as like a tier 5 version of the Clemson. And finally, we have the Marblehead. Marblehead is one of the oldest perineums in the, uh, in the game. She costs 34,000 coal, it's a U.S. Uh, tier 5 light cruiser. Uh, you can think of her as the B-hull uh, version of Omaha, uh, but with a change of torpedoes and limited by stock range. The tor her torpedoes are very, very weak, only dealing about 6k damage, but they do have a respectable range of 8 kilometers. Uh, she's... Uh, she's a very high skill floor and ceiling just because of her uh, very squishy hull, but she has potential because of her amazing uh, firepower if you can if you survive long enough to use it. And so I would recommend her if you want a very if you want a challenging, but a very good seal clubbing ship, or you just happen to love Omaha ships in general. So with that tier fives out of the way, we'll move on to the tier four. And there's literally just one tier 4 here. And that would be Yubari. Yubari is t uh, cost 25,500 coal. She is a tier 4 uh, Japanese cruiser. 
She's kind of similar to Kluma in terms of her overall playstyle. Uh, however, her armament loadout layout is a bit closer to how Furutaka plays. I would make the comparison to Yahagi as well, but I don't expect many players to have her. Um, the initial gimmick of the Yubari is that she carried DFEA. Unfortunately, that was much more useful in the RTS era, but in today's, uh, today's rework CV, that DFA is not quite as useful. And Yubari is very vulnerable to Citadels due to its uh, very highly raised Citadel. I wouldn't recommend her anymore just because her DFA gimmick is kind of gone, and there are definitely uh, better premiums out there than Yubari. And then we'll go on to our Tier 3 ships. We have, first we'll start with the Campbelltown. Uh, Campbelltown is 19,500 coal. She is a tier 3 British destroyer. Uh, she's historically one of the US destroyers that was given to the British as part of the uh, uh, Destroyers for Basis Act. Uh, so she has a, she uses the Wix hull, but uniquely carries long range torpedoes. Uh, to compensate, she doesn't have as many guns, and so if she gets to, into a gunfight with other destroyers, she will likely lose. She ends up having a long-range torpedo playstyle. She's fairly easy to play because of that, but uh, there are a lot of other torp-based destroyers at that tier that you may consider taking instead. So, but I can still recommend people wanting Cabal Town because she is a pretty histor historically significant ship. And then finally, we'll go on to Charleston. Charleston costs 15,000 coal, tier 3 US cruiser. She is a St. Louis class cruiser, and as a result, she plays very similarly to her. Um, St. Louis herself is a very powerful tier 3 cruiser, and so by extension, Charleston is very similarly uh, very powerful. She is easy to play and pretty easy to master. And so, if you want a good tier, uh, tier 3 seal climbing ship, uh, something to put your 19 point captain in whenever you want to fight in tier 3, go ahead and buy it to Charleston. And with that out of the way, we have to finished our quick review of all of the tier 7 and below coal ships. So now we'll go over a quick list of which ones we recommend, which ones you may consider for niche purposes, and which ones you should probably avoid entirely. So, we'll start with the recommended list. Uh, for my list, I would of those ships, I would recommend the following. Lazel, the Eagle, the Anshin, the October Revolution, uh, Hill, and Charleston. Bo, do you have any uh, changes on your list? Nope, that's the exact same list as mine. That All those ships I would highly recommend uh, for Tier 7 and below coal ships. Highly recommend. Very good choices there. Alright. So then we'll move on to the niche category. These ships are main, are not quite as good for various reasons, but they're still uh, fairly fairly decent picks if you know what, uh, what kind of ship you're specifically looking for. In this case, I put four ships on my list. Duga York, The Gallant, Kirov, and Marblehead. What about you? What about you, Bo? Um, the, the niches are also really good as well. The Kirov is really good for a spotter plane for training, so I can definitely see that for a niche. Uh, niche, and the Marblehead is also a very strong cruiser as well. So I think this is a niche as well for it having a good DPM. Mm hmm Marblehead's powerful, but she is very, very vulnerable, so mm -hmm. I don't know if many players will enjoy her unless, uh, unless they are very comfortable with playing Omaha type cruisers. Yep, exactly. And then finally, we have four ships that w that we would not recommend for uh, for various reasons. So Flint is one of them. She is very expensive uh, as a coal ship, just and she has very limited range. So I would not recommend her. Uh, Boiskavitsa, she's kind of been outclassed as a destroyer for a while, so. Uh, even with the minor buffs recently, uh, she's just still not enough to be competitive. So I would avoid her for the time being. Yubari is just not a very inter interesting cruiser anymore since she lost her main gimmick. 
and I would recommend uh, I would recommend just the uh, Saint the uh, Charleston over her. And finally, we have Campbelltown. She is a Torp Destroyer, but there's already a lot of Tech Tree Torp Destroyers at her tier. You might be more interested in those, picking those up for free. Anything to add, Bo? Nope, that would be it. Thank you so much for your time today, SAT Score. I greatly appreciate it. If you guys have any questions or concerns, definitely leave them down in the comments down below. Uh, again, we covered the Tier 9 and 10 coal ships in another video, so if you're interested in watching that, uh, just go into the information section of my YouTube and you'll find it there. But yep, thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you all later.